So, when it comes to the South Asian community and around mental health, I think some of the biggest barriers are if you were to ask a lot of people in the community, it doesn't exist, which which is not true. But um, I think it is a taboo subject. People don't really want to talk about it. Um, people are quite hesitant in talking about it. People um, rather sweep it under the carpet uh, than actually start talking and having that those conversations around mental health. Um, I mean, those are the, that's kind of one of the biggest issues that you have. In reality, mental health exists. It's there. It's happening. Um, we need to start addressing it. We need to start accepting that it is. It does happen. Um, but one of the biggest things that I would probably say to you is that it's the perception of people, what they understand when they say mental health. Um, from a language perspective, the translation of mental health is quite strong. So the direct translation, for example, is bagel. So that in itself is quite a strong word. Um, and if you were to translate that back, it's more crazy, loony, that kind of an interpretation. Um, so people kind of, that's instinctive. And then that kind of puts up barriers and stuff. Um, it's also around shame. Although I don't, I think it's more damaging by trying to hide it, more damaging to try and cover it up. And for the reason of shame, it's just ridiculous, you know, shame on the family and stuff. Well, I mean, it's like any other, it is an illness and people need to think of it as an illness. You know, it's, if you had, I don't know, stomach pains, would you just leave it? Would you not go and get treated? Would you not go to the doctors? You know, if you're appendix burst, would you go to the hospital? Or would you just leave it and stay, say, no, no, it's, and, and, do you know what I mean? So it's, it's an illness. And we need to address it. We need to get the right help in place for people. Um, that's something that, the South Asian community more so need to wake up to um, that it is happening, it does affect people and it is about getting them the right support, getting them the right help, which is there to get them get them better, really. I think, I think the community need to, yeah, trans and understand what we mean when we say mental health, emotional well-being, well-being in general, you know, everyone, I think everyone goes through some form of mental health. Low mood is a form of depression, you know, um, anxiety, being anxious, you know, those kind of things. That's a form of mental health. So I think there needs to be more explanation from a service perspective or services need to be probably care. And services do do that, you know, they will explain that and we try and get that message out as much as possible um, and hopefully through this more people will kind of so it's not about it's it's about little it could be little things but it's impacting on someone's well-being emotional well-being could be physical well-being could be absolutely anything isolation and stuff on which has been mentioned previously so so it's a, it's kind of understanding what we say when we mean about mental health um, and it's not always that someone who might come forward with mental health that or they're going to be locked up or they're going to go into i don't know ward 18 and Jewsby hospital the mental health ward it's not always that it could be just something that they need and it doesn't always have to be medication either it can be simple little things, engaging with services, services putting them in touch with, you know, uh, for example, there's men's talk, that group, you know, just talking to people, having that opportunity, that kind of goes a long way for people. It's just a difference. So it's not always about mis misconception. I think people hear mental health think, oh my God, that's it. It, it doesn't, I'm not saying that doesn't, it isn't the case with certain elements of mental health, but it's not always the case. To, that that's what we mean. If, that makes sense. if you don't, it's it's like, and I'll go back to the example of if you if your appendix is burst and you leave it and you don't get treated, it's gonna get worse. 
pain's probably going to get worse, potentially you might get infected, for example. Do you know what I mean? And, and lead to serious other issues if you leave it. It's the same with mental health. If you leave it and leave it and leave it and don't get it addressed at the earliest point, as soon as you're aware of something, you know, and, and you can tell by something's not right here. And those instincts are usually correct. If, you know, far from a family, from a friend. If you feel something's not right, it's important that you kind of encourage that individual to go and get that help at the beginning. Because if you don't, it is going to get worse. Mm -hmm. It's just going to continue getting worse and worse and worse. And then, you know, it gets to a stage where it's, it might then become where, yeah, they have to have hospital intervention or or that kind of stuff. But if you pick it up early, chances are you won't need that. And we can get it sorted from the start. I think the first thing that needs to happen when it comes to mental health for the South Asian community is education. I think sometimes the services, what we try and do, we target the individuals that need the service. Um, and I say this a lot, and what's happened for years, and yes, there's a massive mistrust in services from people because of, you know, mentioned before around services have come in, tick the box and then left, and that's happened for decades. It's not just happened for the last five, ten, whatever. It's happened for a good four, five decades that's been happening. So there's a massive mistrust in the, in the, within the community around mental health or around services, in accessing services. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, they're here. And when we go into the community, or oh, yeah, they're just ticking the box. That's the natural feeling. So first and foremost, it's a massive trust issue. We need to be consistent. Services need to be consistent and regular in terms of engaging with the community. Is they need to be fulfilling if they're making promises. They need to fulfill those promises. They need to be honest about things and not just say, oh yeah, and then not do it. If it's going to, for example, um, if something's going to take a while, be honest, say, yeah, we'll look at it definitely, but it might not happen straight away. Just have that honesty. Um, and that's, that's the first thing from a service perspective that we need to start doing. Secondly, I think, is we, we, target the, we target the individuals, as I said. The problem is the individuals don't have the backing of the family or the community. So I think we need to go back to basics, and I call it. I think for years we've tried to, we haven't got a strong foundation. And that strong foundation is only going to come by education, educating the community, understanding they get through education. Because once they understand it, then that has a knock-on effect. And they realise that actually services are there, then that has a knock-on effect. First, what it does, when you... So, so I've done something, for example, uh, around substance misuse, delivered a course in the community. But that was specifically for, it wasn't for individuals who are using or anything, or using substances, it was more so about just educate the community. And what the knock-on effects from that is that, A, they learn around substances, addiction, understand it. Secondly, it creates them starting to have conversations within their circles about it. That has a knock-on effect of if somebody then, and we've seen that now in service, that people have more open, honest conversations. What that has is that, a friend might tell another friend and say, oh, yeah, I know this person, I know this. there's a service, why do you speak to them, why do you get that? It has a knock-on effect. So that's what we need to do. We need to start back, back at the basics. Let's start from the bottom and build it up, rather than still trying to build a roof without a foundation or a wall without any kind of foundation. And that's how, that's where we're at. In my, that's where we're at in terms of, from a community perspective.